Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. Uh, today I would like to talk about why I think so many people have trouble learning languages. Now, many of you have heard me say before that the three keys to language learning are motivation, the time you spend with the language, not necessarily in class, but with the language, listening, reading, talking. And the third thing is the ability to notice what's happening in the language, which is a skill that we acquire the more time we spend learning languages. So someone who isn't motivated and isn't going to spend the time, uh, they're not going to learn, they won't develop the ability to notice, that's fine. But there are many people who are motivated, who do spend the time, but don't succeed. And why is that? They sort of abandon in frustration. So I've given this quite a bit of thought because ideally, like I, here I am at age 67, I'm having my a great time learning languages, communicating with people in different languages, and I have, you know, the goal of learning even more languages, and I'm having a blast. And yet, and yet then I hear from people who are learning their first language or their first second language and are, are completely frustrated. What is the what is the problem? Well, I think that one major issue is that people who haven't learned a second language, who have never become fluent in a second language, don't believe they can do it. They've never done it before. They've never experienced it before. So it's a it's a bit like trying to climb a mountain if you don't believe you're going to reach the top of the mountain. So I think that is one of the major reasons people just haven't done it before. Uh, so they don't have the confidence that they can do it. They don't know how to do it. There are a lot of things about language learning they don't realize. They don't realize that you're going to forget what you learn. You have to keep learning it and forgetting it and learning it. And that that should not be a cause for frustration. Uh, people get frustrated if they make mistakes. People get frustrated if they didn't learn that lesson and nail it down. But it's impossible to do that. And these are things that I tell people, but they don't accept. They seem to feel that if they put all that effort into learning and memorizing, that somehow these things should stick with them, that they should be, under, be able to understand, that they should be able to use these words, that they should be able to get their tenses right. And of course, you can't. So I think people who have experience with learning languages are used to the idea that it's a gradual process of getting used to the language. Uh, people who haven't, uh, they want to see results. They want to be able to say something and they want to be able to say it correctly. Maybe it's our school system that makes us think in, in along these lines that because we study something, we should learn it. And maybe there are things, you know, if you're studying for a test in uh, physics, you've got to try to remember those things for the test and you have to try to understand the concept and so forth. Whereas language, is different. Even if you understand the concept, you still won't be able to necessarily use it correctly and you won't understand it when you listen time and time again. So I, I think this is a very important concept that language is a matter of getting used to. And, and this, is a, this is really a, 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 an approach to learning which is in some ways quite oriental. Even though in, in places like Japan and China and Korea, uh, they're very much into the sort of the teacher, the professor, the master will teach me. In fact, if we look at their traditions, if we look at sort of the Zen tradition, if we look at, uh, you know, Zhuangzi in, in Chinese philosophy, if we look at, at some of the approaches to craftsmanship in Japan, it's very much a matter of, of watching people and learning and nare, as they say in Japanese, getting used to something. It's not learning it theoretically from a book is gradually getting used to it that it sort of layers on to you and and with each layer certain things become clear and because these things become clear some other things become clear but you have to have the confidence that this process this layering process this exposing yourself to the language is going to lead to your desired result because if you don't have that confidence then I guess it can be a frustrating experience. And so I think the, the question then is someone who hasn't had the experience of learning a language, if that's the obstacle, how do you overcome it? It's kind of like a catch-22. You can't achieve that sense of transforming yourself into someone who can become fluent in another language 
until you do it. So you kind of have to have that leap of faith that you can do it. Anyone can do it. Now, granted, the more languages you learn, as in my case, I've learned a number of languages, so that not only have I gotten used to, to different languages, I've gotten used to, to learning. I've developed my te techniques of learning. And people who have learned a number of languages, therefore, have become accustomed to the process, have developed their own techniques, and so forth and so on. So what do you do with that beginner learner, the first person, the first language, the person who's learning their first new language? Well, you know, A, it's a matter of having confidence that you can do it because others have done it. Others in different countries, different cultural backgrounds, different ages. Uh, it's not a matter of having some unique talent because if you go to Sweden, they all do it. They don't all have some special gene. Anyone can do it at whatever age, all right? So you have to accept that. And I think the other thing is to do things that are enjoyable so that that the frustration of forgetting, the fr frustration of making mistakes, the frustration of feeling that you're very clumsy when you speak, that those things don't become the dominant experience. You have to do things that are enjoyable so that the enjoyable aspect of language learning becomes the dominant experience so that you put in the time that you get enough exposure that you become accustomed to the language. What are those enjoyable experiences that depends on each person? For me, as I've said many times, it's listening to things of interest, it's discovering Romania through Radio Romania, discovering Czech history through Tolki Cesco Minulosti, or discovering Russia through Echa Moskvi, reading about it, reading about the history of the country and so on. That to me is enjoyable. Uh, other people want to get out and speak early, fine. But, uh, you know, and, and I don't, for example, do grammar exercises because I don't find them enjoyable. Some people may find them enjoyable. If you can focus on doing things that you enjoy so that the journey itself is enjoyable, if you can accept the fact that implied in language learning is forgetting, is making mistakes, is being clumsy, is not understanding, and that it's just the process of exposing yourself rather than trying to nail down a table of declension of endings or conjugations, but rather that, that if you spend the time with the language, gradually your brain will get used to it. And your ability to notice things will improve. In my sort of uh, uh, trichotomy there of, of motivation, everyone understands that. Yes, motivation, you got to like the language, you got to be, you know, determined, you've got to think you can do it, you can't resist the language, the people understand that. Spend the time, they understand. you got to spend an hour or two a day, that everyone understands. But learning to notice, people don't seem to understand. But I had it happen to me so many times that uh, I don't notice certain things in the language that, uh, I, I don't know what to pick, I always use the example, well, I'll take the third person singular uh, in the present tense in English. Uh, people are told you have an S there. It's I go, you go, he goes. Uh, people say, yeah, yeah, I understand that. And then they kind of don't really pay attention when they hear the language. Or the pronunciation. I've used the example many times of, of people who rely on uh, how words are pronounced or how certain uh, spellings are pronounced in their own language. So word becomes word. They aren't listening. They aren't paying attention. They aren't noticing. And so the more you learn languages, the more you learn of a particular language, the more experience you have with the language, you start to notice better. These are all forms of experience that you gradually accumulate. You gradually accumulate. So, uh, a lot of people experience frustration in language learning because they have never achieved success in language learning. Uh, but success breeds success. And once you've done it once and you've realized that objective, of becoming fluent in another language and you realize how wonderful it is to do that then you have the confidence that you can that you can do it again success breeds success uh, some people stay within the comfort of certain language families latin you know romance languages or european languages but i think the same applies to learning a language from a completely different language group say chinese or japanese or arabic uh, at first people are again intimidated because they haven't done it before but once they do it and they've achieved that sense of success, then they know they can do it. So I guess the, the message here is for those of you who do experience 
frustration in your language learning, uh, you have to stay the course. Find ways to enjoy it. Find some way to climb that first mountain. Once you have climbed that first mountain, then you look out and you see all the other peaks and you know that you can climb any of those other peaks because you've already done it. The hardest one is the first one. So I hope that that is in some way motivating. I should say one more thing, by the way, I've made a lot of videos now in English. If you would like to hear a video in another language, please let me know. But I want to do these for speakers of those languages. I don't want to just sort of demonstrate Romanian or something. If someone feels that they are following me in English but don't fully understand and would like to hear it in Japanese or French or, or Spanish or Portuguese or some other language, please let me know. And uh, I will make mistakes when I do these in other languages. Perhaps fewer mistakes in French or Japanese and many mistakes in Russian or Portuguese. But I'm happy to do them with mistakes because if I say that it's important to accept the fact that we make mistakes when we speak foreign languages, I have to accept the fact that I'm going to make mistakes and I don't mind showing my mistakes to other people. It's all part of the process. So I look forward to hearing from you. You can uh, ask me here or you can, sim you can uh, send me a message via Twitter, however you want, uh, Lingo Steve, and I'd be happy to answer your questions or if you have a, spe a special request to hear some of this. Uh, uh, my views on language learning in other languages, please let me know. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.